The next thing I'm going to do is talk to you about paint brushes. Paint brushes come in all different variety of sizes and shape, but as you can see, these are my paint brushes. These are just the cheap Walmart ones that I've had. Nothing super impressive or important about that. Uh, these are the ones that I use to cover up like big miniatures like earth elementals or dragons or something of the sort that needs a lot of paint coverage to where you don't really need a fine tip. As you can see there's a couple stray hairs on a few of them that I'll pull out if I need to, so on and so forth. But these are my cheap brushes that I use for the larger stuff. It's good to have these on hand. I also like terrain and stuff works really well with them. But these here are my fancy ones. These are from Michaels and they were about two bucks a piece. They're Windsor and Norton. A lot of people really like that company. I have a size brush that is a two and a zero. The two is bigger than the zero. They have these little plastic things as you can see on them. And that comes very much so important because you want to store your paint brushes after you use them upright so that all the water and anything that's dripping off of it drips off of them into something else as opposed to into the actual brush itself which will ruin your brushes. So keep the plastic things by all means, because they're very important for your nice stuff. But if I remove them, you can see that the zero is pretty pointy, but it could be pointier and it will be once I get paint on it. And the two here is the one that I use the most. You can see that it has a lot of wear on it because of how much I use it. The bigger ones you're going to use more than the smaller ones, and you might need something for like a smaller one than a zero for dotting eyes, this one for doing the small details, and this one for covering up like the skirt or something on the, the male miniature. So where you're covering a large surface as opposed to this one's going to take you forever to cover a small surface. And if you're covering large surfaces with a small brush, it's going to ruin your brush faster. So you want to use the appropriate brush for the appropriate part of the miniature. There are a couple ways to take care of them, and I'll show you how to do that throughout the video to make them last longer, but it's a lot easier than you think it is. It also saves money if you take care of your brushes, which was the main reason why I started actually taking care of my brushes and getting fancier ones. Uh, I recently got the fancy ones from Michaels because of the fact that I have been painting miniatures a lot more recently than I used to. So I figured if I'm going to be using these like every night, that I should get something better. And the only reason why I want to get something better is because of the fact that you can paint with anything. You don't even have to paint with a brush necessarily if you want to paint something. The thing is that having the proper tools for the proper craft takes a lot less energy and time out of the project. So if you have the proper tools, everything's a lot easier. And everything goes a lot, by fast, uh, a lot faster, and so on and so forth. So by all means, invest in like some a couple, at least a couple of good brushes, and you should be good. These cost me about five bucks each for the fancy ones, and like these were the other brushes were literally cents on the dollar. So you don't have to worry about them so much. But next up, what we're going to be talking about is paints. As I said before, my gaming stores have Citadel paint stocked in them, so I use those. These run you about or $3.95 or something, just over $4 for one bottle of it. And one bottle of it is pretty small looking. It's like, wow, $4 for this tiny amount of paint. But this amount of paint can cover a lot of miniatures. And this type of paint is specifically meant to work on miniatures. So this is what this paint is built for. And it'll make your life a lot easier if you use this kind of stuff. But uh, there are the old style that I have from when I started which have lasted me probably about, I don't know, five years maybe? I didn't paint a lot uh, beforehand as opposed to I'm painting practically every night nowadays because of my D&D campaign that I've been running recently. And that just goes to show that it kind of is worth your investment because it takes a long time to run out of paint with these things. And it covers a lot of miniatures and they'll last a long time too. They're not necessarily super easy to dry out. But the new stuff looks like this and the medium stuff between the two looks like this. And I think they tried to remake the bottle because the bottle kind of sucked for this one. So they made it into this one. The thing about these paints though is that whenever I go to paint them, I prefer these but they don't sell them anymore so that's okay. Because these close really nicely and seal very nicely as opposed to these whenever you open them like so whenever you open them and you close them on the front 
Yeah, it's closed. No, it's not. There, as you can see, turn it around. It's not completely closed, even if one side's closed. Like, alright, that's a solid fit. You literally need to push around, like, the entire thing to close it entirely to make sure that your paint's not drying out. Which is okay. This is an extra step. It's not like it's a make or break sort of thing. It's like, oh my god, this is complete crap. They also have this little tab back here to where you can honestly pull your paint open all the way. It slips up like that and it stays open. Which is very convenient except for the fact that this top of the paint bottle drips onto the back as you can see here where it gets paint all up in here and it makes a complete mess and waste your paint. So what I do is I'll close it by pushing that tab back through which is kind of a hassle and I'll just kind of lift up the bottle about this far and I'll just kind of insert my brush into that gap to try and get the proper amount of paint that I need so that it doesn't drip outside of my paint bottle not wasting paint. Uh, but that's how the Citadel paint works. Uh, you can literally use any miniature paint and it'll work just fine. If you use Reaper miniature paint or anything of the sort, it's gonna work fine. Just use whatever's around you and this is around me. But even with the cost of like, this is about $4 per bottle of paint, usually a miniature takes maybe three to maybe six at most different kinds of paints to where if you buy the paint for that miniature in particular, it's like, I bought this miniature and I buy these paints for it, these paint brushes, we're good to go. It's only going to be a certain amount at that point in time, like three paints would be below $15. And then if you buy six paints, it's like below $30. So, therefore, it's really not that much to get you started now with that paint. That'll last you through that miniature and like a hundred more miniatures on top of that. So, you just buy the paints that you need one at a time, you're making an investment, and eventually you'll have a whole paint bottle stock to work with in the future for your future miniatures that you're painting. So over time, it works out really good. Don't think you need to buy all the paints all at once to get you started or anything.